fascinating title, in my opinion, what is the policy challenge of the Chinese investment in you. I think the policy challenge to encapsulate in, a, in, a, uh, in one word is what Charles Grant said at the beginning, which is open up China and keep China uh, and keep you open to China to, to a very large extent. Uh, these having said, I think that the debate maybe is not necessarily as uh, difficult as it could see, or sometimes one could see by, by looking at newspapers, especially in the specific member states. Um, first of all, the debate is not as bad uh, in the EU as it is in the United States. Um, we, we don't have a long-standing debate of, uh, of a China problem like, uh, like the currency problem that exists in the United States, possibly because for the EU, China is much more integrated in its own supply chain economics than it is in the United States. We have a positive trade balance with the world, even if we have a negative trade balance with, with China. We produce an input from China, a lot of goods that we re-export to the rest of the world. So for us, China probably is less problematic as a political uh, uh, trade uh, issue than it may be for the United States. This, of course, does not discount issues like the solar panel that has just been mentioned or, or, or other cases. Uh, there is and there will certainly be uh, calls from time to time mm -hmm. to take corrective measures or um, <coughs> trade defense measures in, uh, in the EU. But I think we should be also noting that whereas one, one, one and a half years ago there was a debate in Europe about creating a, a, a CFUS like, so the instrument the United States has to screen uh, foreign investment on uh, national security uh, accounts, this debate has somewhat died down. Those calls are no longer pressing as they were one and a year half uh, ago. So the, uh, I would tend to be rather optimistic, maybe I have to because of my work, on whether the European Union is open to, to China and will remain open to China. So my opinion, the, the policy challenge that we're facing is uh, to open up China. Uh, to make, on a bigger scale, uh, the life of uh, uh, Professor Goodman more secure. I mean, it's not so much his own uh, landlord, but is the European company who wants to invest in China, which has to be more secure. And if that's not going to be taken care of, then I think we will have a number of uh, further calls to, to be more restrictive towards Chinese investment. Now, why and what we can do about that? Well, the why, I think, is very easily. China-EU relations today are a sea difference from what they were 10 years ago. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we were going to China to produce and re-export towards Europe. Now we go to China to produce for the Chinese market, and we look at China as a market for the future, a market of destination. This is what, to a, lot of, a large extent, our company are doing more and more, or at least they will be doing in the future. Uh, there will be, there will need to tap into a potential growth in China, especially if, but one hopes it doesn't uh, goes on this way, that the economic crisis in Europe continues for a few for a few more years. So we need to compete. We are competing for the Chinese market as much as the Chinese firms, which are expanding their uh, added value basis, so they're producing better goods and more modern goods, will come and compete for the European market. Well, the answer, at least the limited answer or the, the, the partial answer to that, is certainly into a, a bilateral uh, fina um, investment agreement with China, which is what the EU and China have, in principle, agreed to negotiate and would possibly start negotiating next year. It will be a novelty. It will be the first time the EU negotiates a standalone agreement on investment. It's a new competence for the EU. For us, the challenge now is to deliver on this and to deliver an, an agreement which is going to be meaningful and useful for European companies which are working or want to invest in, in China.